Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and today I have a fairly simple process video for you guys. Uh, I was really inspired by this new stamp set from By, by the Well for God. This is the Light 2. Um, as soon as I saw this, I just knew I needed to get it in my Bible and use all of the stamps because it is so adorable. So the verse reference on the stamp set is Matthew 5. Uh, 16. However, there are various places throughout the Bible where it talks about light um, and letting your light shine and, and, and things to do with light. So there's a lot of different verses that you can use this stamp set for. Don't feel like it's only for this one verse. Um, and I will try to incorporate it in some other um, verses and some other projects and things like that. But it has all these really adorable lanterns. And so I am working in Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 all the way down to 16, which I'll talk about here in just a second. But I'm going to be heat embossing in my Bible. Now I did not prep my page with gesso and I had bleed through with my embossing powder. So if you do not want your embossing to bleed through, then you do need to prep your page with some gesso first. Um, if you have questions about heat embossing, I have a very in-depth Tip Tuesday all about embossing that I will link down below for you guys and where I go into details and tips and tricks and things like that. So I will link that video and you can check that out. But um, what I'm doing is I am first prepping the Bible page with my EK Success powder tool. Um, this basically is just using a powder on the page to take away any fingerprints or stickiness or it just helps to give a clearer impression when you're heat embossing. And then I'm stamping the image using some Versamark ink. This is a clear, sticky ink. Um, and what you saw is I actually stuck a stamp block underneath my Bible page before I stamped. Um, where I'm stamping in my Bible up here, there's a lot of dimension in my pages. And so I want to make sure I get good, clear stamping. Here's where you can see that bleed through. Um, and so I'm stamping with a stamp block underneath there just to give it something hard to stamp on. Um, so here we go again. I'm going to go ahead and kind of lay things out. My verse is kind of right nestled in all of those. And so I'm not wanting to cover the verses. I do cover some of the text on this page. If this bothers you, you can definitely just work in just the margin or don't heat emboss. Just use a lighter colored ink to stamp in um, and just adjust it to what works for you. So here you can see I prep the page. I'm going to stamp with that clear sticky ink. On Bible pages, you can kind of see it leaves like a little bit of a watermark. You can kind of see where the stamping was. So that's sticky. Um, and it stays sticky for a good amount of time, but you do want to work kind of quickly. I'm cleaning my desk off here, but then I'll go ahead and sprinkle some Ranger gunmetal embossing powder over that. And it's going to grab a hold of wherever that sticky ink is. Dust off the excess, and then you can pour that right back into the container. So don't toss it. Don't waste it. You can use that again. And then you want to hit this with your heat tool until it melts and gets nice and shiny and melted. So I'm going to do that for all of these different images here. I've gone ahead and sped up the video. And like I said, if you have questions about embossing, check out that Tip Tuesday where I have lots more information about embossing and how that works and things like that. So and this just, because I'm going to be using watercolors, the embossing is kind of nice because it gives it kind of a raised effect. So you can actually feel the embossing on the page. And so the watercolor kind of stays within the lines or stays out of the lines. Um, and I also liked that this metallic kind of mimicked, you know, these vintage -y looking uh, lanterns that would have some metallic aspects to them. So that's kind of what I was kind of what I was going for. Um, and like I said, I am working in Matthew chapter 5. And starting up at verse 14, it says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Um, and I just love this verse. I know we've probably all journaled it several times. And this is also just above that where you see um, being the salt of the earth. And um, I know I have journaled this several times. But it's just a good, it's a good reminder of how we are supposed to live out our lives as a Christian. Real quick on screen here, I'm just going in and watercoloring using my Prima watercolors. Sometimes I lay down water first and then add the pigment. Sometimes I just go straight to the page um, with the pigment. So yes, yeah, so we're talking about being the light of the world. And as Christians, you know, we're, we're to live our lives in a way where people look at us and wonder 
what it is about us that's different. And, you know, the, the world is full of so much darkness and sin. And so we are to be that light to shine in that darkness. Um, and this imagery of, you know, being like a city set on a hill, don't be hidden. Don't you, if you're a Christian and you're in a workspace, let people know that you're a Christian. Don't hide that. Um, it may bring about some persecution and some, you know, discrimination because of that. But that's, I mean, that's kind of God tells us that's part of the deal of being a Christian. And um, our job is to walk through that with our head held high, pointing to God and um, just giving him all the praise, which just goes to show how great he is. And so it just kind of makes people go, well, what, what is it about that person? I need that in my life too. Um, and so I just, I love this set of verses. And like I said, I've journaled it several times. So I didn't leave myself room on here to do any journaling or anything like that because I have journaled it before. Um, this is just going to be one of those kind of statement type um, Bible journaling pages. So I'm going in, I'm trying to keep the watercolor a little bit lighter around the lanterns because I'm going to come back in and add kind of a glowing effect. So sometimes I can go in with a wet paintbrush, wet an area, and then pick up the paint with my paper towel and kind of lighten up the color around those lanterns. I did go ahead and make a big splattery mess. I want to make sure that this is really good and dry because I'm going to go in with some perfect pearls. And perfect pearls are like a mica powder. They have a binder in them and it grabs a hold of things that are wet. So like a Versamark ink or just plain water like I'm using here. So I'm taking a paintbrush. This has no paint on it, just water. And I'm going in and wetting the page in the areas where I want the perfect pearls to stick. Now I did make a mistake in that I went ahead and wet all of the areas that I want to cover first, but our air conditioning broke this summer and so it's about 90 degrees in my house. It is hot and dry and so that water is already drying very quickly on the page. So I quickly found that I can't work in big areas. I have to work in smaller areas, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that you know the area is wet where I want to add this. And then now I've switched to a dry paintbrush. This paintbrush has nothing on it. I'm picking up a little bit of the Perfect Pearl pigment um, and this is in the gold color, I believe and dusting it and blending it into the areas where the water was. And so here's where I realized the page is already drying. So I'm gonna have to just work it one little lantern at a time, add that water. And because I'm using water as opposed to an ink or something, the water activates the binder in this pigment. And so now it is adhered to the page. So I don't have to worry about it rubbing off or anything like that. It is stuck on there. And I do like that it's kind of patchy and not perfect. And it just gives this really soft, glowing look. I think out of all the times I've journaled this page, this is one of my favorites. I love how this perfect pearl just really looks like this, you know, shimmery, shimmery light that's happening um, and when you kind of tilt the page it's even more noticeable in person um, it really looks like it's glowing so I'm not worried about staying in the lines or anything like that I'm going to fix some things after I get this on the page but I'm um, just kind of switching back and forth between that wet paintbrush and the dry paintbrush I just cannot find the paintbrushes that came with the perfect pearls they're a nice fluffy brush that work a lot better I don't know if I accidentally threw them away I don't know what happened but I'm just trying to use the fluffiest dry brush I have to blend that in and it doesn't take much powder at all um, and it just grabs a hold of anything that's wet so now I can go back in with a Faber-Castell gold pen and this pen is very opaque so here I can kind of go over anything where the pink got into the lines or the perfect pearls got into the lines and just add some finishing details to those stamped images. Those stamped images are very intricate and the lines are very small, so there are not a lot of areas to color in, um, but this does just add um, some more detail to it and I can draw on the lines. There is like a rope type stamp in that stamp set that you can stamp, um, but because I had them all varying different lengths and things like that, I decided to just go ahead and draw it in. And then now I'm going to hand letter. I've sped this up quite a bit, so I actually take my time and write pretty slowly. I write out lightly in pencil first and just go over it several times to get the letters the exact shape and size that I want. And then I'm going to take my Tombow Feud calligraphy pen. This is one of my favorite pens for this technique. Um, it doesn't bleed through the Bible page, but it does shadow pretty heavily, especially in areas where you go over it several times. Um, and now I can kind of thicken up lines and create that faux calligraphy look. Again, this does cover up some of the text. So if that bothers you, use something lighter colored or just stick to the margins. Um, like I say in every video, I have several videos to, or several Bibles to 
study from. Um, and so if the text gets covered, it's not the end of the world. Um, I use this Bible solely for art journaling. So I can go back in and just thicken everything up. And so one of the things I learned when I was doing hand lettering was I'd watch these videos and think that I had to write as fast as the video was going. But once you realize most of these videos are sped up, this is sped up five times. So it is very fast. So in real life, I really take my time and write very slowly to get that hand lettering down. So take your time, slow down, and just lots of practice. I make sure that the ink's good and dry, and then I can erase the pencil marks. And then I'm just going to go in with a white Uniball Signo gel pen to add some highlights to the lettering, underline my verse. Um, and then in the final photos, you'll see I added some little star details in there. Um, and this just kind of helps put some finishing touches, helps give some more interest to the lettering. I'm just applying this to the left side and underside of every letter. And this is one of my favorite uh, white pens. So I will have all the products linked down below for you guys. You can check that out. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.